Greetings everybody, Dr. Andy Woods here, and I am the president of Chafer Theological Seminary. And you might be asking yourself the question, or you might even be rolling your eyes, another seminary? Are you kidding me? Don't we have too many already? And one of the reasons that we became involved with Chafer Seminary and why Chafer Seminary actually started back in the 1990s was a core commitment to certain fundamentals that we consider non-negotiable. In other words, all of our students and all of our graduates, we want them to be exposed to these fundamentals, seven uh, essential ingredients, which I'd like to briefly share with you. And we feel that these are really not honored and respected across the board at many theological institutions. And so we wanted to create a seminary that honored these seven things. We essentially are training people for the pulpit, and we want people when they step into their teaching role and pulpit ministry to be the type of preacher or teacher or shepherd or pastor teacher of God's flock whose ministry radiates these seven essentials. So they are, number one, a commitment to Scripture's original languages. As you probably know, the Bible was not written in English. <laughs> the Bible originally was written in the Old Testament, mostly Hebrew, with a touch of Aramaic, and the New Testament was written in what is called Koine Greek. And so we believe to understand the Bible correctly, a shepherd or pastor must demonstrate or must have some facility in Scripture's original languages. It's not that you can't understand the message of the Bible when you read it in English, but it's the difference between watching the same movie in black and white, or would you rather watch that movie in color? And when you study the original languages of Scripture, what you start to see is it's the same message, but wow, that's the, the color version. There's so much more depth and quality. And the interesting thing about studying languages is it's not like studying some other area like church history, for example, which we believe is also very important, but you just memorize some facts and you kind of spit it out on the test and you pass the class. Languages, they don't work that way. You have to spend time uh, in languages to really gain any type of mastery over them. And so we have a curriculum devised whereby we have heavily loaded it up with languages because we want our pastors and teachers and graduates to be teaching from the original languages of Scripture. The second distinct, distinctive that we have is the consistent, and that word consistent is very important, a consistent commitment to the literal method of interpretation. We believe that the right way to understand the Bible is through the literal, grammatical, historical, contextual method of interpretation in other words, interpreting words and phrases in their ordinary sense, taking into account, of course, figures of speech when they are conspicuous in the biblical text. And the word consistent is very important because a lot of people will be literal with the Gospels, literal with things related to the first coming of Jesus Christ, but when it comes to end times, suddenly they're allegorical. They'll tell you that thousand in the book of Revelation chapter 20 is really not a literal number. Or they'll go back into early Genesis, Genesis 1, for example, and they'll tell you that the six days of creation were not six literal 24-hour days. So we want to apply our literal method of interpretation to the totality of of God's Word. The third distinctive that we follow is what is called dispensational theology. 
We are not dispensationalists because we're in love with dispensational theology. We're dispensationalists because we believe that that system is the product of a literal method of interpretation. And essentially what you see through a literal, consistent application and interpretation of Scripture is God has separate programs. He has one program for the nation of Israel, and he has a separate program for the church. And all of those two major programs are assumed under God's overarching purpose in his human his history, which is to glorify himself. And if God has a separate program for Israel and a separate program for the church, that means the Lord is coming back at different times. One for Israel, one for the church. And this furnishes our belief in the pre-tribulational rapture of the church, which will take place before God's rescue operation for Israel, which happens at the end of of the tribulation period. These are all facets of what we call dispensational theology, which is the product of a consistent, literal, grammatical, historical, contextual reading of the whole Bible. And so our graduates, we want them to be dispensationalists in the manner in which we have described it. The fourth distinctive that we have is the full counsel of God's Word. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 talks about how all Scripture is God-breathed and profitable. In fact, when Paul was with the elders at the church at Ephesus on a little, in a little port area called Miletus, at the end of his third missionary journey, he talked about how he had given to them the full counsel of God's Word. He had not left parts of the Bible or God's revealed truth out of his ministry. And so our curriculum is designed so that by the time students can graduate, they can think their way through all 66 books of the Scripture, 39 Old Testament books, 27 New Testament books. The students will be able to think their way through all of the major areas of systematic theology. And this is our way of teaching our students and preparing them for a lifetime of ministry of declaring or delivering the full counsel of God's Word. Another distinctive that we have, this takes us to number five, is the sufficiency of the Scripture. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 17 says that the Scripture equips us for every good work. 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 and 4 talks about how through God's precious promises we have everything that we need for all matters of life and faith and godliness. And so we don't look at the Bible as a piece of Swiss cheese that has to be sort of supplemented by the teachings of Charles Darwin or by the teachings of Carl Jung in the area of psychology, Darwin in the area of origins. We believe that the Bible is a sufficient revelation. In other words, the Bible is enough. And so we don't sidetrack our students into sort of church marketing type classes uh, counseling from the standpoint of humanistic psychology or understanding origins in terms of kind of mixing the Bible, mixing early Genesis with Darwinism. We're not into theistic evolution, uh, the day-age theory, and all of these other things because we believe that the Bible is a sufficient revelation. And so we emphasize the sufficiency of the Scripture. When you encounter a Chafer graduate, you're encountering somebody who believes that very thing because that's how they have been taught. This takes us to a sixth distinctive that we have, which is a biblically informed, comprehensive worldview. 
uh, once students uh, acquire this knowledge of the scripture, it doesn't just sit, you know, on a printed page somewhere, but it's something that can be applied to the great controversies of the day. Think of the controversies that are hitting the evangelical church today, the social justice movement, for example, liberation theology, those that want to mix the Bible with the principles of Karl Marx. What does the Bible have to say about that? What does the Bible have to say about voting? What does the Bible have to say about the institutions of God that God has ordained in Genesis chapters 1 through 11? We want the Bible to speak to the great issues of the day. We believe that the Bible is inspired in every area of life and when it comments on worldview issues, we believe it's just as inspired there as it is when it tells you how to get to heaven, such as in John chapter 3, verse 16. So our students graduate with a knowledge or an understanding of a biblical worldview and how the concepts of the Bible relate to the great issues of the day. And finally, our final distinctive is we believe in the freeness of God's grace. You know, there are many people that will tack good works into salvation as a means of being justified before God. In other words, receiving the, the salvation to them means, yeah, you've got to believe in Christ alone, but you also need to do this or to do that. And we simply don't believe that. What we believe is God's grace is just that. It's grace. It's a free gift. And the only thing God requires to be justified before Him is faith alone in Christ alone, plus absolutely nothing else. And when a person is saved and they happen to fall into sin, for example, we believe that their salvation is not canceled, their salvation is not erased, their growth in Christ might be hampered. But what got them in the door is the grace of God, and what keeps them in the door is the grace of God. And so we don't put good works on the front end of salvation, nor on the back end. We believe that people are saved by God's grace and kept by God's grace, and so that becomes a great distinctive of our teaching. We derive our name from Lewis Sperry Chafer, who also emphasized greatly in his many, many wonderful writings, the grace of God. And so this is why Chafer Seminary exists. And in other institutions, you can find some of these distinctives honored, but not all seven. And those, real quickly, by way of review, are a focus on Scripture's original language. Number two, training in the consistent use of the literal, grammatical, historical, contextual method of inter interpretation. Number three, we believe that yields a dispensational theology where you begin to understand that God has separate programs for Israel and the church. And then number four, we want our students to be teachers of not just a part of the Bible, but the full counsel of God's Word. That was number four. Number five is we believe in the sufficiency of the Scripture, that the Scripture alone is enough for all matters of faith and practice. And then number six, we want that understanding to be applied to the great issues of the day through a comprehensive biblical worldview. And finally, we place a great emphasis on the freeness of God's grace. And so I hope you'll pray for Chafer Seminary. I hope you'll get behind Chafer Seminary. We hope that you'll recommend students our direction because we want the pulpits of our nation and our world aflame with these seven distinctives. And these are things that don't just come into existence coincidentally. These are things that students need to be trained or discipled in. You know, the Bible teaches that in the end, a person that is discipled will take on that of his teacher. 
And I've tried to explain in this brief presentation what the teachers at Chafer Seminary are teaching with the hope and the prayer that students will emulate those characteristics. And so the pulpits of this generation and the next generation will be alive with those distinctives. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, God bless you.